All right, welcome back to Speaking Life. I'm here with uh, Maricela. Maricela, how old are you? I'm um, 34. 34? Yeah. And uh, are you from Tucson? Yes. Born and but raised was, here? No, but I was born and raised in Sonora, but it's called Sanarora. Sonora what? Sanarora de Tisca. Oh, Sanora okay. Tisca. And uh, when did you come here from over there? About 15 years ago. 15 years ago, okay, yeah. Uh, the that whole family? Like, no, just me. Just you? That was like in 2013. And your parents stayed over there? Yeah. So who did you live with over here when you came? Uh, nobody. Uh, so you were what, on the streets? Yeah. Wow, you say you're 31? 34. 34, and uh, what's your situation right now? It's hard, it's easy, sometimes life gets hard or whatever, but I just, some people say I'm the devil in that, but I don't know if I am, if I am, probably because of that. That you're the devil? Yeah. Well, let me tell you right now, you are not the devil. Yeah. You know, Satan is a liar. So when you came from uh, Sonora, you were basically on the streets, huh? And, and your parents stayed over there? Yeah. Did you like run away or something? No, I think it was best because I had a job to do, so I did what I had to do and come back. Oh, you were working here and then going back over there? Yeah. Okay, and, and your parents, uh, are they still around? Yeah, they are. Do you keep in contact with them? Sometimes, but I prefer to keep long distance away from them. Why is that? Because they say the same thing that you're not my daughter because you're a devil. Well, again, let me tell you, you're not the devil. You're yeah. a child of God. No, God created you in, uh, in His image. He created you in His image for Him. Yeah. And uh, that's too bad that you gotta uh, keep hearing that from people, but just remember, you are not the devil, okay? Thank you. You're welcome. So basically, they know your situation. Now, how long have you been on the streets? So, this is like since you came from over there, it would be like what, 15, 16 years old? Yeah. So, you have no family here? No, I don't, but I do, but it's just I keep distance from them. Like my brother Saul Felix, and my brother Feliciano is my twin brother. Oh, and you got my, a twin, huh? Yeah. And the oldest is Valdez, and the middle Cesar Garcia. Now, do you use any uh, substances? Yes, I smoke meth and blues, but I call it black. I don't know why. You call it black, like the heroin? Yeah, but I don't do black. Have you ever done black? Uh, no, but I should once an officer stopped me as a friend. Give you advice? Yeah. Well, that was nice of him. So, uh, how long have you been smoking meth? Over about, about 16 years. Wow, 16 years, huh? Yeah. And what about the blues? It was about 12 years. Have you ever tried anything else? I tried to shoot up, but uh, that's when my follow friend officer helped me out and told me not to. Okay. And how often uh, do you smoke meth, like, in, uh, during the week? Oh, once in a lifetime, like, once in every two weeks. Not every time. And it's, and that's the reason because you don't have money or because you prefer not to? No, I do have money, just I prefer to hit it once in a while because I stress out about what am I going to do the next day. Okay. And what about the blues? How often you hit those? Once in a lifetime, like every month. Depends like if I need it because I really don't like it. And how did you get turned on to, to the meth? I always smoked meth since I was a little kid. Before you came over here? Yeah. So you smoked it in Mexico, huh? Mm-hmm. And, and, and the blues, you just smoked those here in Tucson? Yeah. Do you ever want to go back to uh, Sonora? 
I do, but I don't know if it's like the same or different. It'll kind of scare me. Yeah, I can tell you right now, it's not the same. Now, have you ever tried to uh, to get clean? I tried plenty times, but it's just it's hard because I don't know what to do when I'm getting sober. But when I get sober, it's like a good sober. But when I get high, I don't get crazy or get physically abused or mentally hurt somebody. It's just I just sit there and talk to whoever wants to talk to me. So you like the company? Yeah. Do a lot of people approach you or they, they you think they try to stay away? away they from stay you? away from me. Okay. Do you have any advice for these youngsters out here that are wanting to try the meth or those blues? Well, me as me being mean, I'm just trying to tell you it's not worth it. It's better off you stay off because how the way I live and if I am what people say I am and me saying that it's not worth it, not for anything. You rather just live your life, work and have a good paycheck, go home with your wife, your kids or your family. That's the best high you can ever have than where I'm at when I sh go through it. I go through hell like every day so the drugs ain't worth it and I wish somebody, if it was the devil, the, there's a devil out there, they can't stop all the drugs. And if it has happened, hallelujah, because I think it's only in Arizona, basically. Now, do you have any kids? Um, no. But I have about five kids. One is Araceli, Miguel, um, Isabella, and Mari, and Isabella. And where are they at? They're with foster kids. Oh, okay. You never been married? Never been married in my life, no. I don't even know what that feels like. Mm. To tell you the truth, I don't even know what love feels like. But if it feels like having your kids around you every day and having them play with you every day, that's a better love than anything. Well, uh, I remember myself, uh, I didn't know what love was until uh, I got to, to know the love of God and uh, now that's the only love I know. It's perfect love. Yeah. It is. Now, do you think you're on the streets because of your uh, your addiction? Or you just choose to be on these streets? I think it's best that I'm on the streets because who I am and what I'm capable of. But if I have my own place or I live with my brothers and sisters, Nothing wouldn't happen, or even though I get high or do whatever, it's just, it is what it is. They believe in that source. Uh, no, I don't, but if they believe in that source, that's stupid because I will never do that to harm a child or human, or any way. Even if they harm me, I wouldn't. So six months to a year from now, do you see yourself in the same situation? Hopefully I don't see myself, but I see myself in the house pretty soon with me and my kids and live my life. And uh, you don't keep in contact with any of your kids, right? No, I do. You do? All right. Yeah. That's a blessing, right? It is. I mean, every day you have a blessing of a child. That's like, they look into you in God's eyes like you're God for number one for us and you're our God. So. Basically, love you for who you are. Even if you're a drug addict, they'll still love you. But it hurts them to see their mom kind of like that, but not like that, but more a little bit to a point like, like, if, you, if I was a bad drug addict shooting up or not caring about them, then yeah, I think I'm a bad person. But if I do, like, once in a lifetime, like every three weeks or two weeks, mm -hmm. I think I'm a good person, but. I don't smoke in front of my kids when they're around me or in front of officers or any humans. And if I do, I do it by myself. But I ain't crazy. Just there's people out there that smoke more than me, and that kind of kills my heart. Do you suffer from any uh, depression or anxiety? For me, maybe if that's called depression or anything, but I take counseling. So. Oh, you go to counseling right now? 
Never know where I'm gonna go tomorrow. Tomorrow? Where's that at? At Cope. Cope? Mm hmm. I'm gonna go to counseling and get my shot that I need to get help. That help me not to see things that are not there and that's real, but they're there, alright? Just other things you gotta ask yourself is it real or not? Do you feel like you're in a dark place? Kind of. Every day I try to get out of it, but I can't get out of it, no. And in no way I can. And just let me tell you that this darkness that you feel that you're in, you should, there's still hope. Yeah, there is. Well, I'm glad you said that because uh, a it lot is. of people feel like there is no hope. Yeah. Now, uh, do you pray at all? Yeah, I pray a lot. You feel that God hears you? I hope He does. I mean, wouldn't I be if He doesn't hear me? And if he doesn't, that's his problem. It's just his whatever. He hears you, but uh, a lot of people think he's he's like a genie, no? They they ask for things that they that they want, not that they need. Well, maybe that they need too. But uh, if God was a type of God that would just bless you right there and then, most of the people would just forget about him and uh, you know keep ignoring him. But uh, a lot of people say, God, show me and I'll believe. And God says, believe and I'll show you. So his, his timing is perfect and I know he has a plan for your life. Now, is it okay if I pray for you? Yeah. Heavenly Father, we lift up Maricela. I see her. We lift her up to you in prayer, Father God. This darkness that she's in, Father God. We know that you are the light. You are the light of the world, Father God. I know that if she takes one step towards you, you will take two steps towards her. Again, Father God, we ask you, Lord, to restore her and let her know that uh, you have a plan for her life, Father God, that there is still hope. Father God, break the chains of drug addiction, depression, and anxiety. Give her a new heart, a new mind, and new desires. Let her know that you are with her, Father God. And all she has to do is surrender, Lord. Deny herself daily, pick up her cross, and follow you, and you will bless her like she couldn't believe, Father. You are the mighty one, Father God. So we give you praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.